Now in home design, we are joined by our favourite designer, Hamish Dodd, and you are here to save the planet one paint tip at a time, <laughs> Hamish. Well, this is what we're going to try. So um, we're going to have a chat about some stuff that Resine do uh, and uh, what you can do while you're using paint to sort of be a little bit more environmentally sound and socially conscious. So okay, good. Something that started off doing uh, November last year, you could take a, um, a tin in and they'd swap it for a test pot. Uh, and that tin would um, be distributed through the Salvation Army and there were thousands and thousands of tins uh, delivered. So it was a really good cause but something that came out of it was going and using test pots and upcycling. So you could upcycle pieces of furniture and maybe plates and bits and pieces and vases uh, from the Salvation Army to give them a new purpose. Nice. We've got, we've got a few little pictures we're going to look at now. Okay, good. It's a bit crafty for me, Mike. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a crack. This is school holiday stuff too. Do well, it this kids. is school holiday stuff. <laughs> so I'm not totally into crafty. I did like this vase. So it's a simple old white vase that you've just carefully put white dots on. Okay, and do you have to get the new. right paint though? It's like a glass vase. Well, no, I mean pretty much you can use any of the resin paints. They're, they're going to be fine. And something you could do on glass is uh, you could put it on the inside as well, so keep it nice off. What's happening here? Repurposing old mirrors. Oh, that oh, looks good. Nice, like yeah. That. yeah, I mean it's a little bit feminine. But <laughs> Jeep is Hamish. Well, you know, you can do some manly things too like I've done. Okay. Okay, so this is all just using test pop. Yeah, this is using a test pot. So a test pot's going to cost you about $4.50 for the standard colours. If you move into the metallics and the Karen Walker colours, you're going to be looking at probably more like $5.50 for some of the specialty oh. colours. So you've done some upcycling projects yourself then? Me, I have. I, I, sometimes. I mean, I'm not crafty, but I have these moments where I will do things. So things I've done, uh, picture frames. I wanted a whole of picture frames. I wanted them all to be in um, variances of white and thereof, um, and so I just got old picture frames that I had lying around and repainted them myself. They're pretty easy because you can pop the glass out, yeah. paint away with a brush and away you go. Foolproof. I've done furniture, uh, more the, probably the legs of furniture. I've painted them in colours and then had things reupholstered. Uh, something I did have fun doing was, you know the old cast iron outdoor table sets that yes. we've all seen? Mm -hmm. Grandma yeah. had them. Mm -hmm. I still quite like them. They still have their purpose. They're good because they're heavy and they don't blow away in the wind. And I've had fun painting those in bright colours. Um, slightly more than a test pot, obviously. Right, but, okay. Uh, gotta... So speaking of your test pot, what if you've got leftover paint? How long does it last for? How long can you leave it in the cupboard? You right, Mal? You gonna sneeze? <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay, good. Gone. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> nice work, Mal. Very, very, okay, keep going. Sorry. Okay, uh, yeah, leftover paint uh, an, an interesting thing. So for a start, what you should be doing is should be trying to buy the correct amount of paint right. from the yeah, outset. Yeah, but who does that really? Well, well, you can ask at the resin store or you can work it out. There's an online calculator you can use and also if you want to do, roughly think about it yourself, you get about 11 square metres per litre of paint. But you're always worried about not having enough so you're going to tend to overbuy rather than underbuy. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I Let's guess be realistic. once again, measure your walls correctly. You should be able to get it within a reasonable percentage. If you're ending up with like two four litre tins left over, you've got a problem. You okay. haven't calculated correctly. I've done that myself though, so you know it's easy to do. Okay, so and, and the paint. Yeah. What's the best way to store it? Because this is okay. something I do. I never, I never know. Then when I go and open it up, I'm like, oh, I didn't do that properly. Okay, yeah. So if if you want to store paint that you've got, say, I know half a tin left over, and you want to keep it for future touch-ups, which is a good idea. Yes. Okay. The thing to do is to take the lid off the paint, put glad wrap across the top of the paint, uh. right, to seal it, and then put the lid back on, and then you store the paint upside down, oh. and that creates a vacuum See, that just, the paint. That just feels to me like a nightmare waiting to happen if you do that. You, you don't put the glad wrap or the lid on properly, it's just going to be paint everywhere. Well, you've, you've got to tap the lid back on, but it's, it's worth the effort, Mel. So if you haven't done this yeah. with paint that you've kept in your garage, I mean, you know how you, everyone's got that part of their garage which yeah, is just a stock full pile of, of half tins. Paint, full <laughs> yeah. paint tins with all the drips, and you can't even see what colour it is because all the drips have run down the side. If you haven't done that, what's the sort of, how long will they last? How do you know if they're okay to use still? Well, paint that's sealed properly should should last you about seven years, Define depending on the quality. Define properly. Properly, glad wrapped and stored upside down, <laughs> okay. or the seal not broken on the tin. Right. All right. Okay. So, the so stuff you've got like, a fair yeah. while that you can you can store the paint. Use it, but the key to it to making the paint last longer is don't paint from the pot with your brush because all you do is shift contaminants back. So you use a small pot, put the paint in there, use that up. Then get some more, okay? So I'm have to and go don't and pour the dregs. Out. No dregs back in the tin, oh, you know. Oh, we don't have to be that stingy. Other things you should think about with, um, you know, with not wanting to wash paint down your drains and bits and pieces yeah. is, as we've talked about in the past, is your brush, wrapping it up with Glad Wrap or in a plastic bag so you can store it that way so it doesn't dry out. That bit I have done, but I'm going to have to go and throw out all those paint cans that I've got in my, like a whole shelf of them because I haven't stored them properly. Yeah, I mean, it's something interesting for you. I'll have, I'm going to read this for you. <clears throat> Uh, more than six litres of household paint is sold for each and every person living 
here every year. Okay, so do you see how much paint is sitting out there in tins? Wow. So don't go and throw it uh, in your uh, your rubbish bin or anything like no. that because it's going to end up in landfills and that's a problem. Yeah. You can take it back to Resine when you buy the paint. There's a small charge that goes on your uh, on your account, and that goes to recycling paint. So you can just drop it off for free whenever you want. Doesn't matter how old the tin is. Even this old right. fella I've got here, clearly poorly stored. You can see it's dry at the top. Thank you very much. You can take it back, and they will even, I think this is good, they'll accept other manufacturers' paint for a small charge. I will back up the trailer. Yes, nice work. Good on you, Rosine. Yeah. Yes. OK, you can get the look, too, at rosine.co.nz. Thank you very much, Hamish. You're welcome. Yeah, thank Learned you. Learned a lot, then.